Hello and welcome to part one of the Gloucester Sea Gladiator Mark II build. Uh, this video hopefully I'll be able to show you all the bits and pieces to do with the cockpit. Thank you Molly. Um, taking it off, cleaning it up, painting, better weathering and showing you how to do um, the instrument panels um, with some PVA. Mm -hmm. More on that later on anyway. Um, looking at the instructions now and um, basically just showing you all the bits um, that we'll need to take off um, for the actual completion of the cockpit as it were. It's very simplistic, it's not um, overly complicated at all, nice and simple and it just goes through the instructions all straightforward. So without further ado, let's uh, crack on with the first bit. Now all I'm doing here is boring out um, the gun barrels as it were, the 303s. There are many ways you can do this but um, the way that I do it, a very simplistic way, is to just get a sharp um, scalpel blade and make a small little hole at the top where the barrel would be and then just very very gently just work the actual blade around and don't worry it doesn't slip so don't look away. Um, and make a small sort of like indation or a small hole. Now once you've got that and it's in the middle as it possibly can be, you can pop the scalpel blade back in it again and as you twist in it, you just slightly angle it so it's actually cutting the actual plastic away and hopefully leaving you with some form of um, gun barrel. Um, I would take your time doing this or if there's another way that you want to do it, then do it, but I'm just showing you the way that I have to do it and I do have the scars to prove it as well. Anyway, there's a gun barrel and all we can do now is sort of like bore it out as much as you want and go from there. So firstly, just making sure that um, we've got all the bits and pieces that we need and know where they are. And then we can take them off, clean them up and hopefully glue them together um, in preparation for the actual paint. So basically all I'm doing is just making sure that we've got all the internal bits um, and seeing very quickly firsthand what we can glue um, first of all and what we can't and what we will leave off until we've actually done the painting itself. So again just looking through making sure that we've got or know the spacings of where we're going to be, what we can take off and what, what basically we'll leave on the sprue. So with a quick check of the uh, instructions we're happy with that and we'll crack on. So basically we're just going through the paints now and what I'll be using is the Attacker Lacquer Paints and they are the interior grey green which is your British standard cockpit colour. Uh, we've got the internal green which is the US um, sort of like cockpit colour. More on that in a moment. And I'll be using the Night Black and that'll be for the instrument panels and so forth. So those are the paints I'll be using. So I'll crack on. So what I've already done is is I've primed um, the well all the bits I need in uh, Tamiya Sky Grey and now all I'll be doing is going through uh, painting the interior grey green. Now I do tend to thin my paints quite considerably um, for two reasons. One, it lasts longer and two, I do seem to be getting a nicer finish, a smoother finish as it were. So again all we're going to do now is just basically this airbrush and making sure you get all the bits that you need to um, also when you're actually doing it make sure that obviously once the actual cockpit is together and the fuselage houses are together that you haven't left anything out um, as in green wise because the last thing you want to do is have everything done you're really happy with it and you look into the cockpit and like I'm doing there the flooring or the bottom of it you can still see through the cockpit um, not good anyway it looks a bit daft but never mind just make sure you get all the bits and that we say is looking not too bad so i'm going to crack on with the rest of it and then go on to more of the internal bits and the framing and well eventually the rest of the cockpit and instrument panels so all we've got here is the well the support um side or the frame for it um again you just airbrushing it over making sure that you get into all the corners and all the sides of the separate frames because there's nothing worse than again you're looking into it and you can see the gray 
coming through. So just take your time, airbrush it as you need to, and just make sure that you get all the bits and pieces. And once all that's done, then you can go back in and pick out the smaller details, maybe the trim wheel, uh, the flap levers and all that kind of business with some acrylic paint or whatever paint you use to brush paint. So yeah, there you go. Cool beans. Right, now for the rest of it, all we'll be doing is just doing some touch-ups where I can see and then we can go straight on to some more of the internals. So everything's painted the interior grey green and all thanks Molly. All I'm gonna be doing now is just cutting through and just airbrushing um some of the interior green, which is a slightly different shade of green. Now the reason why I'm doing this is I basically want to just make in sure that I haven't got you know a solid block of green of the grey green. Um and just add some different sort of like colour variations, um, some highlights and some lowlights of obviously where the curvature of the kit is. Um, I haven't done this before, um, it's the first time I've done it sort of like within it, um, the cockpit area, um, and I just thought, well, do you know what, I'm here, let's just crack on and do it and see what we come up with, and so far, yeah, it's not too bad, it's difficult to see actually on the camera, um, but it is there, and you do see a, quite a difference, I suppose, in the different types of green, so all we'll do is, we're going to carry on and just do the other internal bits there we've got the uh, carpet flooring and all we're doing is is basically just airbrushing in and around the the edges and some of the sort of like in the middle parts as it were again that part there what we've got is the top half for the cockpit um just there that'll be the firewall at the rear of the pilot and again we'll just add in some different tones just to break up the monotony of that sort of like solid block of interior grey green. Again, all we're going to do in here is just do it on the sides. So when we come around to do the um, weathering stage, as in the dry brushing, you'll have the two greens and a very light grey, just to throw that in the mix, as it were. So anyway, finishing off, making sure we've got all the bits we want, and then we can carry on with the internal or well, other internal bits. That part there is um, on the very top, and that's where the um, seat harness or the uh, shoulder straps part will lay as it goes through into the cockpit. So all we do now is we're doing the instrument panels. Now on this one on the kit, um, you do have uh, decals for the instruments, but all the decals are separate, they're all individual. Um, something that I've never come through before, or come across, so I say, um, but they work well, um, as it's one thirty second scale, they are quite large, um, so they are very manageable. So all I'm doing here to begin with is um, painting the actual front part of the instrument panel. And once all those are done, we can get on to the deckling. Again, using a thin paint, not too thick. Thanks, Molly. And then carry on with 303s. Before you know it, we can start putting things together. So what we're doing here is just doing a very quick dry brush um, using um, Sky Grey, uh, Tammy as acrylic. And again, all I do is just put some on a brush, get as much off it as I possibly can and just go over all the raised parts of um, where the kit or the kit parts are, just to simulate some like where, where the pilot and ground crew have been. Um, can simulate sort of like some wear of the paint, some paint chipping and so on. Just gives that a little bit of um, sort of like a lived in look, but not a battered look. But just remember, if you are going to dry brush, just remember not to overdo it. And when you think it's um, just there, then stop and carry on with the next bit. So yeah, there you go. Right then, when I was happy with the uh, interior grey green and the other green, um, we just went straight on to the instrument panels. Now again, as it's 
black um you don't want to overdo it um but then again you want to put some some form of wear actually on the actual instruments now on the um instrument panel itself so you've got a, a couple of switches you can just go over and just add a bit of depth to the actual um, panel itself without it just being like a black panel. So once you're happy, have a quick look over. And again, once you're happy, stop. Now that part there, that is the uh, middle part of the instrument panel. And again, you've got some really nice sort of like uh, raised detail for the actual decals to go down on. And you can go over with that um, just to sort of reiterate that they're there, as it were. And again, the last part there, I'm just going to quickly just go over it. And that will be the bottom end or the bottom part of the instrument panel that goes on to where that firewall was that I was showing you earlier on. So once you're happy with that, and you haven't overdone it, like I do sometimes, you can put it to one side and we can think about then putting the cockpit together. So first off, what we're going to do is, is as per the instructions, uh, we're going to pop in the 303 machine gun. Um, you've got some good anchor points um, throughout this kit. So all we're going to do is just make sure that we've got um, glue where we need to. Pop it in and you can just feel the actual anchor point going in and it is nice and secure. Just give it a bit of a squeeze just to make sure it's uh, in the right place. And you really shouldn't have any problems. So that's it. That's the 303 in, that's on the starboard side. You can see where it's come through on the aperture. So all good. So there you go, there's your two 303s. And then we can progress in sticking in the side panels for the cockpit. So you've got two anchor points there, which you can just pop in. And you've got like a shelving um, on the actual part itself. Um, actually, the part that we're gluing in. And that just settles in just below um, where the machine gun is. It is a good anchor point, And once it's in, you're not really going to have any issues with it moving around. But as I say, rule of modelling is just making sure that it is dry and it's solid and it's not going to go anywhere so as we're doing now just popping it in making sure it's straight and it's going to go nowhere so yeah there we go. molly's snoring molly wake up so again making sure nice and straight and happy with that cool Right, so what we can do next is put in the other one and part of uh, the instrument panel, uh, or one of the instruments, not too sure what it is. But again, it's nice and simple, good anchor points, and you can pop it in. And while we're doing that, or we're letting that to dry, we can put together uh, the cockpit flooring and the seats, harnesses, uh, the compass, uh, control lever, and all the other bits and pieces that go into the cockpit. So once it's all in, we're happy with that, then we can go ahead. So what we do is, we're just showing you how I do um, the seat harnesses. Um, we're doing, or we're using the Eddard um, one for it, for the Sea Gladiator. Uh, basically all we're gonna do is just take off the lap belts for the time being. We're not gonna do the uh, shoulder harnesses because really we need to have the cockpit built up first before we put them in so just double check in you can pop that in once all that's in i'm just showing you again once it's uh, basically all complete the cockpit and then we can start looking at putting the seat harnesses in so just making sure i think it was on 15 now and that's the point where you can put in your shoulder harnesses So what we do is I use my Tamiya scissors and just basically clicking them off all the sort of like the fret points and we can do a bit of a, a quick cleanup. Now what I tend to do is, is depending on the part, 
is if it's a smaller part, I'll try and get it um, or snip it off as near to the part as I possibly can. With larger parts, I, do, I just tend to just, just take them off at any point um, because they're a lot easier to clean up. Um, one thing I will say is when you're using these scissors, just make sure that you do get the point of where you need to be because um, you'll see here that I am struggling just a little bit just to try and get what's left from the fret off the actual kit part. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to get it to come off or come out so I can snip it off. But what I've inadvertently done, I've taken one hundredth of a billionth of a millimetre um, off of it and I couldn't get it off. But anyway, it was off in the end. So all I'm going to do is attach it to the actual seat itself. Now, I use super glue um, for the seat harnesses because it's a lot stronger and a lot more secure. When it comes down to the instrument panels, I tend to use a PVA or a micro um, soft, uh, micro soft, micro crystal clear. Bloody hell, I thought, thought it was Bill Gates then. Anyway, all you're going to do is you just dab a little glue, bit of glue onto the kit part or the seat as it were just by the seat adjustment lever swear a little bit because you can't get the bit on the actual tweezers come on you little sod there we go and just place it very gently onto the super glue until it takes a bit of a bite to it now I use rocket super glue uh, with a 10 to 20 second drying time so once it's there just press on where the part is and just leave it for a few moments and then we can bend them into place so all we do is once it's all dry i get a pair of tweezers and very gently just bend them and get them to conform to the actual seat itself and the same thing will apply with the actual shoulder harnesses so once that's in and you're happy you can do the other one and just very very gently just press down so it's going to conform over the side of the seats and there you go Ta -da! good that isn't it right what we're going to do now is Let's clean your brush off and get the micro crystal clear out. Whoa. Okay, when using the micro crystal clear, um, basically what I'm going to be doing is making some bezels. Now, the decals are actually on um, the instrument panels. They went down really well. Uh, just used a little bit of the micro set and sole and they put it down really nicely. So all I'm going to be doing is using a bit of the crystal clear with a cocktail stick and I'm just going to dab the glue over where the instrument dial is. Now, what I tend to do is, is just put a little bit on at first, spread it around to where the circumference is on the dial, then I can add a little bit more, just to make sure you've got that sort of like curvature of the glue as it's settling down. Um, if, um, like me, you're a bit heavy handed and you put a little bit too much on, don't worry. All you need to do is just basically get as much glue off the uh, cocktail stick using your hand. And you can go around and you can just pick off any of the glue that's maybe gone over where the bezel would be. And if you really cock it up, um, like I do quite often, just get a cotton bud, wet it with your finger, uh, wet it with your mouth, bloody hell, and you can crack on and you can just wipe it off and start again. So once it's on, like I said, making sure it goes around to the edge of the actual instrument itself. And what it'll do, it'll dry crystal clear and nice and shiny. So what you've got is you've got the contrast of this semi-gloss black, and then you've got like a really sort of like stark gloss of the instrument panel. So when it's actually in the cockpit and you look inside the aperture, you can see that you've got bezels. Yeah, rock on. So, now that's done, all I'm going to do now is just do a very simple weathering of the internal cockpit or the flooring 
and the sides. Now all I'm going to be doing is using um, MIG products for this and here all I'm doing is just going over the kit part um, with some thinners just to make it a bit easier for the actual um, weathering product that we used to go into all the nooks and crannies and all down the panels and all the rest of it. Now I'm using a weathering effect um, as you can see it's earth and what I'll do is, is once it's all in I can get the other brush and pop it all in and hopefully on the camera you can see it all running down all the different panels and once it's dry all that's going to simulate is bits of dirt bit of earth as it was that's accumulated into the cockpit but again you don't want it sort of like in your face um and sort of like absolutely caked in it so all we do is got it on the brush and all we can do is a few dabs all over the cockpit flooring uh, I'm not sure if you can actually see it moving around, but that's what we're after. Just in the corners. Yes, I know, Molly. Making sure that you've got all the bits where you want to be, or where you want it to be. And as you can see there, that little white bit, that's the compass. So hopefully when that's dry, that'll be all nice and, nice and clear and nice and shiny. Yes, Molly. So again, once you're happy. And if you do go overboard, all you do is get like a, a cleaner brush and you can go over it um, and just basically take it all off. So you're not stuck with it once that it's actually on. So don't worry about that. All we can do now is to follow on to the lower part and do the same thing. So once you're happy and everything's dry, all you can do now is to basically start putting um, the internals of the cockpit together. Um, what I would do is, is follow the instructions um, as in putting it together and going from rear to the front. This makes it a lot easier. But what I've done is there, I've put in the top end or top part of the actual uh, cockpit where the firewall would be. And again, you've got some good anchor points. So once it's in and it looks straight, you can pretty much guarantee that it is straight. And all you need to do is put a couple of dabs of glue, not too much because they're on show and it's secure. Okay, once you're happy with that and it's uh, all dry, we can start putting in uh, the cockpit flooring um with um, the seat and obviously with the harnesses and all the rest of it again you've got two major anchor points um on the actual kit itself and what i would strongly suggest you do is once it's in um and it's straight to your eye what i would do is i would get the other fuselage half and pop it together and making sure that the anchor points on the other side as in would be the starboard side go into um that actual part itself as in the fuselage half that means you'll get a perfect sort of like alignment and just keep it there until it's dry because the last thing you want to do is have it all in it's all dry you're happy with it and you put the cockpit uh, sort of the fuselage sides together and they don't fit so test fit dry fit making sure you actually get it all done mm -hmm. so i tend to dry fit twice and glue the once that's a good piece of advice but with that moving on we've got all of it in all nice and dry now one thing i will say is um it isn't problematic but you've just got to watch where that instrument panel is going and just to make sure that it is nice and straight so just put a very small dab of glue just so it can bite onto the kit part and again once it's on you can start to adjust it and once you've got where you think it is and where it should be pop on the other fuselage half and just make sure that it's straight and it conforms with the other anchor point on the other fuselage half so once you're happy, put more glue. 
and you can just carry on. So once you're happy, we're all in, all nice and dry, and we can go on to the last bits. So all we need now is to pop in the little panel there, which you can slide in and out. Um, I would glue it um, if I were you, um, although it is pretty secure there. And that's where the seat harnesses will lay or part of them. And the last bit, what we've got to do is just pop in where the fuel tank um, apertures will be or where you fill the actual thing up. And that's a simple case of just popping it in, making sure it fits. When you do pop it in, it does look a bit, well, it doesn't fit. It does. It's meant to be that way. So all you need to do is to do a couple of dabs of the actual glue. Grab your part and pop it on and just make sure it is nice and straight and secure. As you can see, that panel fell off. So I will glue it if I were you, because you know what's going to happen if you don't. So there, there you go. It's all in. Again, put the fuselage halves together just to make sure you've got a, uh, a nice fit. And you really shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. So yeah, just making sure you get the instructions. Just making sure that you've got everything out and everything in. Because the last thing you want is for it to be all buttoned up and you've got one part that you haven't put in. So there you go. All in, all dry, seat harnesses are in, everything out, out of the box as per, with the exception of the seat harnesses. There are Eddard's um, um, photo etch set for it, but for me, all I want to do is to make it out of the box as best as I possibly could. So yeah, all we've got to do now is crack on, put the other fuselage half on, glue it all up, and we can proceed. So there you go, all buttoned up. All we've got to do now is to uh, do a bit of a clean up of the seams and it's all ready to go. With the rest of the uh, wings and bits and pieces for the fuselage, we'll do that on the next video. So until then, bye for now, keep safe.